During World War II, American soldier Paul Richard Averitt captured many graphic pictures of Dachau concentration camp. Despite the horrors he witnessed, Averitt and other soldiers on the front relied on a crucial mode of transportation, railways. Railways played a crucial role in the transportation of troops, equipment and supplies during the war. In this video, we'll discuss how the railways played a crucial role in the war. This video will mostly focus on Europe. Although Asia and Africa were hit hard by the war, I believe that the railways played the biggest part in the European theater of war. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a lot. Thanks and on to the video. Picture this, you're an American soldier who's just arrived in France. Great, how are you gonna get to the front? You definitely aren't gonna walk there. Trucks are a better option, but they can't transport many people. You're most likely going by train. Trains can transport a ton of people at the same time, which was necessary to break through the enemy defenses. Railways were also crucial in bringing soldiers to the coast to be shipped off over the ocean by planes or ships. Trains were also used to evacuate and retreat troops. Hundreds of thousands of troops rescued from the shores of Dunkirk were transported by rail all over Britain. The sheer scale of Operation Overlord, also known as D-Day, likely wouldn't be possible without trains. Hundreds of thousands of troops were transported to the southern coast of Britain, nervously waiting for the ships to take them to mainland Europe. As we all know, with the benefit of hindsight, D-Day was a success, and I think that the railways played a big part in that success. Trains were used to evacuate civilians away from danger. Over 300,000 people were evacuated from London to the British countryside. Millions of Soviet citizens and a large part of Soviet industry fled the Germans, using the railways to travel further east. For me and many other Czech people, one story stands out above everything else, but for that we need to take a little trip. This is the Prague main train station, and this is a memorial on the first platform. You might ask, what does this memorial mean? And the answer lies in a series of heroic acts that happened here over 80 years ago. After the annexation of Austria and the Czechoslovak Sudetenland by Nazi Germany, Britain established the British Committee for Refugees from Czechoslovakia, or BCRC. This committee was in charge of organizing the escape of Jewish children from Czechoslovakia to Britain by train. This is Sir Nicholas Winton, the man that organized a lot of the transports. Originally, he was not supposed to organize transports. He was supposed to go skiing in the Swiss Alps, but a BCRC worker, Martin Blake, convinced him to organize the evacuation. He threw himself into the work, and in the end, Mr. Winton and the BCRC saved 669 children from almost certain death. Tragically, 250 more children were almost saved. Their train left Prague on the 1st of September 1939, but it was stopped and returned back due to the start of the war. After that, he joined the RAF to help fight the Nazis. After the war ended, he was discharged from the RAF in 1945 with the rank of flight lieutenant. Soon after, he returned to his regular job at a bank. The story was mostly forgotten until 1988, when the BBC organized and televised the meetup of the people he saved. These people, known as Winton's children or Wintnowe Dieti in Czech, were all very grateful. Mr. Winton is considered a hero in Britain and in the Czech Republic. He was awarded with the country's highest honor, the Order of the White Lion or Rád Bílá Holva in Czech. There is also a spring and a primary school named after him. Last but not least, there is the aforementioned memorial of the evacuation on the Prague main train station's first platform. In Britain, he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II. Sir Nicholas Winton lived a long and fulfilling life, and he died at the ripe old age of 106 in Slough, Great Britain. All the equipment produced in factories, whether in Detroit, USA, Omsk, USSR, or wherever else needed to be transported to the front. After all, all those Sherman and T-34 tanks mostly couldn't get to the front by themselves. 
some equipment was moved by trucks or by planes, but nothing could beat the cargo carrying capacity of trains. The railways were absolutely crucial in the wartime supply chain. Trains picked up the equipment from the factories and transported it to the coast for shipping in case of the US and Britain, or just directly to the front, like in the USSR. The Germans were acutely aware of Britain and the USA shipping their supplies by sea and then by rail, so they went on an extensive campaign of railway and port sabotage. Probably the most important act of sabotage happened in 1944 after D-Day, when the Germans mined the waters around the port city of Cherbourg, delaying the Allied advance. Railway workers are the unsung heroes of the war. Without them, moving the sheer amount of people and equipment would be impossible. As more and more men went to fight, more and more women joined the workforce to keep everything running, from factories to trains. These workers were also crucial long after the war ended. After the last bullets went off, after the last peace treaty was signed, after the last soldiers surrendered, Europe was but a pile of rubble. Pictures like this, from the Dutch city of Rotterdam, truly show the scale of the devastation brought upon the continent. The six years of war absolutely destroyed Europe, its infrastructure and its people. The railways and its workers were absolutely key in reconstructing Europe and its economies. The industry provided a strong base of employment, and combined with the money from the American Marshall Plan, and to a lesser degree, the Soviet Comic Con, the economies of Europe were able to recover and grow stronger than before. Unfortunately, the railways weren't just used for good purposes. The Axis powers also used trains extensively to carry soldiers and equipment to the front, but most importantly, the railways were absolutely crucial in the transportation of millions of Jews to concentration camps. The conditions in the trains were appalling. Most deportees were stuffed into railway cars like cattle, with no food or water. The cramped cars also smelled of urine and feces, due to the lack of toilets. Lots of people died before the train even got to its destination. If anyone tried to escape, they would get shot on sight by armed guards. The sheer scale of the Holocaust was made possible, in part, by the carrying capacity of trains. This brings us back to the beginning, when American soldier Paul Richard Averitt entered Dachau concentration camp on the 29th of April, 1945. One thing he immediately noticed were all the rail cars stuffed with corpses from Buchenwald concentration camp. He took many photos of the atrocities that he saw. These photos are extremely horrific and graphic, so I won't show them here, but if you want to see them for yourself, the link is in the source list in the description. I still can't wipe the atrocities I saw away from my memories, so please, don't look up the photos if you have a weak stomach. We must never forget the atrocities that happened. Although the railways allowed the horrific tragedies to happen, ultimately they helped the Allies win the war and end the atrocities. Without them, the Allies would have had a much harder time defeating the enemy and liberating the subjugated nations. Thank you for watching to the end, sorry if this video has been a little sad and dark, the next video is going to be about a more positive topic. This has been Tramley, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!